There's an old abandoned building near my house. Typical, I know. Anyways, there's hundreds of rumors and stories around this building. Some normal, some insanely out of this world. Some say an insane maniac lives in there and tortures anyone who enters. I've even heard that it's a portal to another dimension where nightmares come to life. The only consistent bit of knowledge is that whoever goes in either doesn't come back or comes back completely different. My best friend, Danny, and I, Chris, names changed to protect identity, are huge enthusiasts when it comes to anything supernatural or even remotely strange, so we decided to check it out. Since the latest disappearances, Cops have been patrolling the area during the day, trying to prevent anyone from getting in, so we had to wait till night. At about 10.30, she came over to start preparing the gear. We made sure to pack some food, warm clothes, and my handgun, Beretta M92 for you gun buffs out there, in case there really was a homicidal maniac living there. We left the house around 11.30, midnight-ish, and arrived at the building a couple minutes later. The second we step out of the car, I notice an unusual eerie fog surrounding the building. Seeing that it was winter time, fog wasn't new to the area, so I didn't think much of it at the time, other than it was extremely thick. We grabbed our gear and headed inside. The door was locked, so we had to break a window to get inside. We threw our stuff in the window, then climbed into the building. Worst mistake of my life. If I could go back in time, I would have never stepped foot in that fucking hellhole. The first thing I noticed inside was how abnormally dark it was. Though we had a few LED flashlights, They didn't do much help seeing in front of us. We had about a 3 feet range of vision, but we decided to explore anyways. Danny was holding the camera and switched to night vision, but even that didn't do much good. I was holding the flashlight and had my hand close to my gun in case some deranged psychopath tried to kill us. As we reached the center of the building, I noticed a smell, not a nice smell. I'm not quite sure how to describe it. It had a metallic tinge to it and slightly burned my nose with each inhale. We also started to hear footsteps. They were quick, almost too quick to be natural. We reach a long stretch of a hallway that leads to a big open area. In the center of the room, there was a big opening that nature decided to create that extended down about 20 feet that seemed to be a basement of some sort. As we approached the hole in the ground, my eyes started getting blurry and my hands started shaking. The flashlight started flickering, so I banged it against my hand a bit to try to get it to work. Then it tripped over something and the camera flew out of her hand. It slid a couple feet, then fell down the hole in the room. We knew it was beyond broken, so we didn't even bother trying to get it. We turned the flashlight to the ground to try and figure out what Danny had tripped over. The light shone on the ground and revealed the body of a deer. It was tore apart. The body had been chewed on, clawed at, and ripped up. Blood was all over the floor. I immediately recognized the smell. It was blood. But the smell 
was too pungent to have been from one deer. Taking a closer look at the floor, I notice the blood is smeared all over the floor. Not only that there were prints in the blood, almost like hands, but the fingers were too long. By long, I mean almost a foot in length, and they were pointed at the tip, almost like talons. The prints were everywhere, on the floor, on the walls, and a few even on the ceiling. The prints all seemed to lead to one room. The door to the room was barely hinged, and the knob was completely torn off. My heart was racing. What the fuck was in there? No animal could have done this. No living creature had prints like this. I'm consumed by curiosity, and before I could snap out of it, Danny is pushing the door open with me right behind her. What we saw still haunts me to this day. Bodies. Piles and piles of bodies. Some still intact, other dismembered beyond recognition. Some animal parts, some unmistakably human. The blood on the floor was about an inch high. There were the same prints on the walls and on the ceiling. Then, that's when I hear it. The same footsteps. Rapid. Stopping occasionally, then continuing again. The door shuts and I swing around and shine the light on the door. No fucking handle on the inside either. It's coming from above me. I point the flashlight on the ceiling. A dark shadow darts across and out of my vision. I pull out my gun and blast a few holes in the door. It sounds like it's right behind us. Danny is screaming with fear, a piercing scream that has me on the verge of tears. I punch a hole in the wall where I had shot a few holes in. I'm able to use the hole as some sort of handle for the door. We push it open and run out as fast as we can. The door slams behind us and we feel like we're being chased. It's right behind us. Then he screams again. I turn around and see a face of pure terror. Then he stops running, and so do I, instinctively. I go to ask her what's wrong, but she says nothing. I look down, and I see five long twig-like fingers going straight through her body. I look back at her face blood gushing out of her mouth. I see her mouth the word run. Before I turn around to run, I look behind her and see a pair of small glowing yellow eyes. They're squinted, almost like whatever the fuck it was was smiling. I turn around and run as quick as I can. I toss my things out the window and climb out as fast as my body could carry me. I get to the car and check all my pockets for the keys. Danny has my fucking keys. I smash the window with the butt of my gun and open the door from the inside. I jump in and hotwire the car. Don't ask me how I know how to. I throw the car in reverse and drive off as fast as I can. When I get home, I run inside and sleep on the floor because of the amount of blood on my shoes. I run into the kitchen with my shoes off and try to find the house phone. I call 911, but the phone lines are down. Cut. I'm not sure how else to get this story out there, so I'm typing this up on my computer to send it out to whoever is reading. Don't go into abandoned buildings. They're closed for a reason. 
I'm not sure how much longer I have because I heard something earlier. It sounded like it was in my living room. It's in the dustiest books that you may find in the best stories.